according to the power that working inside of us. Yesterday we start dealing with a lesson on yesterday, dealing with dealing with the uh, the gift of discernment, and so we're gonna pick that lesson up today about the sun and so i hope y'all ready hope y'all prepared and so thank god for pastor silas of poland amen i appreciate all of my kenyan brothers the support they give and how loyal and faithful they are and uh, we yet raising money for the kenyan project and every Every dime of money that we receive from the Kenya Project is going to help to finance 100 Bibles. Amen. 100 Bibles for our Kenyan brothers. And um, I'm sure that the cash app information will be on the screen. And anybody who wants to sow into this project. Please help us support our Kenyan brothers. Amen. All right. Now we're going to be dealing with. We are going to be dealing with the gift of discernment. And we're going to try to finish this today, this particular lesson, because I think it's important that all of us uh, remember what the word of the Lord say, lean not to your own understanding, but in all of your ways acknowledge him. And so we want God to be our leader. We want God to direct our path. Uh, the Bible says that the steps of a good man is ordered by the Lord. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for God to direct us. And in order for God to direct us in the place, uh, He would, the way he would have us to go, the place he would have us to be, the thing that he would have us to do, we first have to allow the Holy Spirit to direct us. When a person don't have the spirit of the sun, they look across the fence and they may be in a ministry already. Uh, 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 Pentecostal truth and apostolic doctrine. But because they look across the fence, they think things are better there. Sometimes they get hoodwinked, sometimes they get misled. But when you have the spirit of discernment, you don't have to worry about that because God will show you the way that you should go to do the things that you have you do to fulfill your purpose. But a lot of people, you know, they get all uh, messed up because uh, they don't remember what the scripture says. The scripture says, know them that labor among you. Amen. If you can't do the work that God called you to do in the house that you're in, if they preach and teach and truth, then you won't be able to fulfill your purpose in the kingdom. Amen. See, because some people have this grasshopper mentality, always jumping and skipping and going from one place to another. But the, the question of the hour is, are you being led by God? Are you being led by God? Are you being led by your flesh? And so that's the thing that we need to examine. When you have the spirit or the gift of discernment, all of this stuff will not move you. Uh, I know I'm talking right. I said, when you have the spirit of discernment, this stuff will not move you. Why? Because the Bible say, in all of your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. So when you allow God to direct your path, I say, God going to lead you to green pastures. I said, when you allow God to direct your path, then God going to bless you with the thing that the Bible said, give you the desires of your heart. That's when you allow God to direct your path. Because that scripture literally means in the Hebrew that God will put in your heart the things that it should desire. And then God will turn around and manifest those things and bring those things to fruition. Amen. It's time for us to do what? Time for us to get wiser. Uh, because the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. And I want to remind you all that the music you'll be hearing in the background, we do not own the rights to this music. And so I need y'all to pray for us, get your prayer request list out. And that's the reason why I give you this prayer request list, because I would like for you to pray over this prayer request list at least three times a day. 
I'd like for you to pray over it when you uh, get up in the morning, when you uh, get on here with us at noon, and also when you go to bed at night. Because the Bible says that the prayers of the righteous are availed much. And so we want to make sure that we be praying for people that are sick, people that are down and out, people that are suffering, people that are going through things. Because when you open up your mouth and pray, I want you to remember nothing leave heaven. It's for something leave the earth. And that's the reason why we need to pray. If things going to change, if situation going to change, if uh, our lives are going to change, we will have to pray. And the Bible tells us, pray with fervency. That means you put everything into it. All right. Thank God for Evangelist Maggie coming on. At this time, I'd like for as many as y'all could. I know some people may be at work on a lunch break or whatever, and you may not be able to pray openly uh, at this particular time. But if you have a prayer request list, you can yet pray over these people. And sometimes you have to meditate on the word of God. And so uh, I say happy birthday to my oldest daughter. Amen. She know daddy love her. Amen. We thank God for Sister Area coming on. God bless you, Sister Area. We appreciate you so much. And we appreciate your family and all of the support that you all have been giving us and the support also that you all have been giving the Kenyan Project. Amen. And so I tell y'all today that the Kenyan Project, uh, we are buying uh, at least 100 Bibles. And so if you want to sow a seed into the Kenya Project, not only all of the money go to the Kenyan Project, listen to me good, but all the names of people that sow seed into this project, we turn their names in. So uh, anytime you uh, visit our ministry or have any question, you will know exactly what this money is for. Because we're not trying to trick people and hoodwink people and stuff like that. But we believe whatever seed you sow, whether into my life, the way of holding the church life, or whether to the Kenyan project, it will go to the place in which you sent it. Amen. And y'all can send some love to you uh, with uh, Evangelist Latanya Nixon Mackey. Y'all can send some love to her today because today is her birthday. That is my oldest child. God bless you, baby. We love you. All right, let's pray. Let's pray, Saint. Let's pray. So that all, all of y'all out there ready to pray, ready to seek the face of God. Thank God for Evangelist King coming on. They say this mountain can be. They say these chains will never be. Come on. But they don't know you like me too. There is power in your name. Gracious Father, we thank you right now because you are God. And there is none like him under you. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are a provider. You're the one that will see to it. You are Shal uh, Jehovah Shalom. You peace, God, that surpasses all understanding. God, you are Jehovah Jabbar. You're a man of war. We believe by faith, God, that you are fighting every one of our battles. God, you are Jehovah Nisha. You are a banner of victory right now. God, you are Jehovah Rapha, the one that heals us. And God, we know that you are as Shadrach, the God of abundance, the God of more than enough. God, we know that you are Jehovah Shammah. You're present. You're present help right now. And God, we know that you, God, you, you alone is God. And that you are Jehovah Shalom. You peace, God. You peace that surpasses all understanding. And we acknowledge you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And God, we humble ourselves in thy sight because in you, God, we live. We move and we have our being. And so we come out and lean to our own understanding. But in all of our ways, God, we acknowledge that you are our helper. You to lift up our head. And God, we come before you as our, we pray. God, let the words of our mouth, the meditation of our heart, God, let it be acceptable in thine sight. And Father, we pray against principalities and power. 
the work of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. And God will decree and declare right now that there is no weapon that's formed against us shall be able to prosper every tongue that rises up in judgment. We condemn it right now. And God, we pray that every stronghold will be pulled down. Every yoke will be destroyed. Every shackle will be loose in the name of Jesus. And God, we pray right now, let heaven touch earth and hell feel the impact. And God, we come to intimidate the devil. We come to let the devil know we have no victory in our lives. And God, we pray that you strengthen where we're weak and build up where we are torn down. And Father, we pray now for the lead of the Holy Spirit. And we say good morning to the Holy Spirit right now. Good afternoon to the Holy Spirit right now. And we pray that you continue leading God in all truth and bring all things to our memory. And God, because you are God, we want to stay humble before you. And God, we pray for everyone that's on the road by live stream. And we pray for all of our Kenyan brothers, God. And we pray both spiritual and financial breakthrough in their lives. And God, we pray for everyone that's be on here with us by live streaming on a daily basis. We pray, God, that you lift their head up and that you put them in a place where you want them to be and allow them to do the things that you call them to do. And most of all, God, not our will, but let thine will be done in earth as it's already done in heaven. And God, we pray over this prayer request list right now. And everybody named us on this prayer request list. And God, we pray that you move by signs, wonders, and miracles. And God, we want to pray right now for a miracle for this eight-year-old young lady by the name of Chaz of Zenith, uh, that's suffering from a stage three cancer. And Father, we plead the blood of Jesus over right now. And God, by Jesus' strike, be thy healed and made whole. And God, we pray right now for Apostle Brown, suffering from stage two pancreatic cancer and diabetes in HIV. And God, we plead the blood, the blood of Jesus. And God, we pray that your word will be fulfilled because you say healing uh, is, uh, the, is the children's bread. And so, God, we pray that you heal my brother, deliver him, set him free in the name of Jesus. God will plead the blood, the blood of Jesus over this prayer request list right now. And God, we pray right now for Mr. Jesse Johnson, stage four prostate cancer. God, give my brother a miracle right now. God, we pray for the family of Shalita Martin. We send our condolences to that family. And God, we pray right now in the name of Jesus for Shangetta Mock and complete healing, Alexia, complete healing, Tammy, complete healing, Herman Wills, complete healing, Melvin Green, complete healing, Jocelyn Green, I mean, Jocelyn Williams, complete healing, William Lord Nixon Sr., complete healing and saving of his soul right now in the name of Jesus. Mother Jackson, Sister Jackie Floyd, God, not only that they be healed, but they be made whole. God, we pray for all of our healthcare work workers, especially our nurses and our doctors, God, that working in dangerous places, God. Protect them, keep them, God, in the name of Jesus. And God, all of these people that on the prayer request list, God, we plead the blood, the blood of Jesus over them right now. And God, we pray for all of our apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, men. We pray for all of our bishops. We pray for all of the people that make up the body of Christ in the name of Jesus. And Holy Spirit, have your way right now. Close my mind with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, God, that I minister your word under the power of the unction of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray and seal this prayer by saying amen. We thank God for Sister Regina coming on. God bless you, Sister Regina. We appreciate you to the utmost. And what I want to say to everyone that's out there today, here's the way, y'all. When it seems like there is no way, we trust in you, God. Yes, yes, Lord. And I want you to understand the purpose of this live stream is for edifying. That is to provide both moral and intellectual instruction. 
It is for education to bring forth or to bring out the potential, the ability that God put inside of you, that you'll be the leader that God has called for this last hour. It is to empower you, to make you stronger and more confident, especially in controlling your life and claiming your right as a child of God. So don't forget, like, tag, and share, and let your friends and your your, your, your co-workers and let them know that the man of God is on your teaching and preaching the honor of God's way, the word of God, one of the last of the Old Testament prophets that don't believe in compromising, but believe in preaching truth. Are you listening to me? And not for the love of money, not for fame, not for glory, not for none of that, but that God will be glorified, the saints will be edified, that Satan will be terrified and horrified, that backslide will be restored, and sinners will be delivered and saved. So don't forget, like, tag, and share. Thank God for Sister Nicole Carey coming on. God bless you, my sister. We appreciate you. To the utmost, what time is it? It's time for us to get wild. Are you listening to me? I say it's time for us to get wild because the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. And when all you get, get understanding. Are you listening to me? Now, we're dealing with today the gift because we're dealing with spiritual gift. Are y'all listening to me? I said we are dealing with spiritual gifts. And not just dealing with them, but we come to define spiritual gift. That you will know what gift God has blessed you with so that you'll be able to go forward and uh, fulfill the call that's on your life. Now, we gave y'all some scriptures that I wanted y'all to write down, go back in your devotional time and study these scriptures. Thank God for Sister Eugenia coming on. God bless you. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse number seven through 11. Please write these scriptures down and study them in your devotional time. First Corinthians chapter 12, chapter seven. I mean, chapter... 12, verses 7 through 11. First epistle of John, chapter 4, the first six verses. That first epistle of John, chapter 4, first six verses. First Corinthians, chapter 2, verses 9 through 16. Second Chronicles 2 and 12. Psalms 119, verse number 25. Psalms 119, verse 125. Proverbs 321. First Kings 3 and 9. Hebrews 5 and 14. It's time for us to get wild. All right, let's deal with this. Let's deal with it. First thing I want you to realize and understand about spiritual gift. Uh, people with this gift distinguish truth from error, right from wrong, pure motive from impure. Identify deceptions in other with accuracy and appropriateness. Determine whether a word attributed to God is authentic. Recognize inconsistencies in a teaching, prophetic message, or interpretation. They are able to sense the, 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 the presence of evil. A lot of people, they can't distinguish evil from good. They can't distinguish right from wrong. They can't distinguish truth from error. Are you with me? They can't distinguish pure motive from impure motive. If you have somebody that's always saying everything, teaching smooth thing, somebody that don't ever reprove, rebuke, correct, instruct, then you ought to realize that this person is not of God. If you have somebody that's always just preaching about prosperity, I believe in the law of reciprocity. I believe in the law of the harvest. I believe in sowing and reaping. I believe in sowing spiritual uh, seeds and natural seeds and financial seeds. I believe in all of that. But I also believe that the wages of sin is death and the gift of God is eternal life. I also believe what the Bible say, follow peace with all men, holiness with doubt, shall no man see the Lord. Are you listening to me? And uh, 
I thank God Evangelist King, I forgot to call those people today. I forgot to call them. Uh, she know what I'm talking about. And so I just need to, to sow that to let her know that I had forgotten to call. All right, but anyway, now, we're yet dealing with the gift of discernment, the gift of discernment. Now, so what is the gift of discernment? Of uh, somebody calling it this way, distinguishing of spirits. It's the special ability God gives to some to know with assurance whether a certain behavior or teaching is from God. Catch this, I need y'all to get this. Because some teaching can be from God or maybe it come from Satan or maybe just plain human error or human power. The, 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 a person with the gift of discernment They have the divine enablement to distinguish between truth and error, to discern the spirit, differentiating between good and evil, right and wrong. Are you with me? So now I want to I want to deal with some of these scriptures. I think we did First Kings yesterday, and we did Second Chronicles yesterday. Uh, let's go to Psalms one nineteen verse. 125, 119, verse 125. Now, the Bible say, 119, verse number 125, I, I was, I hesitated because I was sitting here looking and see that I want to bring some other verses to keep everything in context. Let's start at verse number 123. It says, my eyes fail for thy salvation and for the word of thy righteousness. Deal with thy servant according unto thy mercy and teach me thy statutes. Are you with me? And verse 125 say, I am thy servant. Give me understanding that I may know thy testimony. Now the living Bible put verse number 125 like this. For I am your servant, therefore give me common sense to apply your rules to everything I do. Now I like this because now he's telling uh, the Lord to give him understanding that he may be able to apply the rules to everything that he do. And you and I, we should think like that. We should talk like that. And we should pray like that. All right, let's go just a little bit further. Let's go to the book of Proverbs. Chapter three. And verse number 21. Now, all right, Proverbs chapter 3, verse number 21. Anytime you see me hesitating like that, I'm reading to see if I need to bring some other scriptures uh, before that or after that to bring clarity and understanding what we're talking about. Verse 21. The Bible said, my son, let me back up to verse number 19. When I look just now, I see that there are some other verses I need to bring into this. All right, verse number 19, Proverbs 3 and 19. The Bible says, the Lord by wisdom had found the earth, by understanding had he established the heaven. The living Bible says, the Lord's wisdom founded the earth, his understanding establish all the universe in space, in space. Verse number 20 says, uh, by his knowledge, the depths are broken up and the clouds drop down the dew. The living Bible say, the deep 
fountains of the earth were broken open by his knowledge and the skies poured down his rain. Now, verse number 21 is where I want to get to. My son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom in discretion. The living Bible say, have two goals. Wisdom, that is knowing and doing right. And common sense, don't let them slip away. So you and I, as children of Jesus Christ, children of the kingdom, he tells us we ought to have two goals, wisdom, and that is knowing and doing right. Then he tells us we ought to have common sense. Do not let them slip away. Some of us say amen to that. Now we're going to uh, Hebrews chapter 5. We're going to Hebrews chapter 5, and we're going to read verse number 14. We're yet talking about having the spirit of discernment, because a lot of people don't have it. What I said, Hebrews chapter 5, verse number 14. Let me back up to verse number 12. And this was part of my Bible class last night, chapter 5 and 12. From when for a time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principle of the articles of God. And are becoming such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. So your spiritual nourishment is progressive. First you're on milk, then you're on meat, then you're on strong meat. Are you listening to me? Verse number 13 says, for everyone that uses milk is unskillful and the word of righteousness for he is obeyed. Amen. Thank God for Sister Demetrius Smith coming on. Bless you. We appreciate you to the utmost. And why am I bringing this into this lesson? Because the simple English Bible says, anyone who lives on milk is still a baby. He has not experienced the teaching of righteousness. So if you're yet a baby, spiritually, let's take it from the natural sense. A natural baby stumbled, fall. A natural baby had to be fed. A natural baby had to be changed. A natural baby had to be taken care of, had to be nourished. And so, by now, you should have grown up because Jesus stayed with his disciples for three and a half years. After three and a half years, they were spiritually mature enough to go forth and fulfill the mandate of the church, going into all the world, teaching. I mean, uh, yeah, uh, going to all the world, preaching, teach all nations. And that's what they did. But when you're a baby, you can't stand strong meat. I want you to think about this. Uh, I used to see the older people when we were coming up. If they wanted to give the baby something a little bit more solid than milk, I've actually seen parents, uh, mothers, if they thought it was too strong for the children, they would chew it and give it to them. Now, Verse number 14, we're in Hebrews chapter 5. I need y'all to catch this because I want you to grow. I want you to get to a place you'll be able to discern spirits. The Bible says don't believe every spirit, but try the spirit and see whether it be of God or not. So a lot of people out there proper lying and telling folk stuff that they just want to hear and teaching and preaching about the pie in the sky, by and by, but they're not telling people how to live by. Anytime any minister don't ever preach against sin, then you know you're in the wrong house. Verse number 14, but strong meat belongeth to them 
that are full age. Are you with me? And that's strong meat. Now, thank God for Sister Shastina Curtis come on. God bless you, my sister. The Bible says strong meat belong to them that are full age. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. That's the reason why I always tell y'all whenever I'm on here, write the scriptures down, go back and study these scriptures in your devotional time. I tell the people at the church all the time. I tell them all the time. I say, look, I want you to understand. Don't tell nobody what Bishop Nixon said. Study this Bible where you'll be able to say, thus said the Lord. Are you with me? And so, verse number 14 out of Hebrews chapter 5. Out the living Bible says, so you'll never be able to eat solid spiritual food and understand the deeper things of God's, of God's word until you become better Christian and learn right from wrong by practicing doing right. And so if you don't feel like God has blessed you with the spirit of discernment, I come to speak to your heart. That should be one of the, the gifts that you should desire. Now we understand that God always is the one that chooses what gift we should have. But now when you talk about discernment, if you're led by the Holy Spirit, then you'll be operating under the gift of discernment. Come on. Because the Holy Spirit is going to tell you and direct you, going to lead you, going to guide you. You'll be able to distinguish between false prophets and true men and women of God. I know I'm talking right. Are you listening to me? I say you will be able to distinguish between false prophets and true men and women of God. Somebody said, Bishop, what you talking about? In the book of Galatians, I think it is what I want to look at. Now, in the book of Galatians, chapter number, uh, chapter number, let me see. Give me a minute. I'll, I'll find this verse for you in a minute. All right. Now, God wants us to be so endowed with this word. Come on. That when we experience truth, our spirit will leap and receive truth and we reject error, and we reject false teaching and false preaching. Come on. Now let's go to the book of Galatians chapter one. I need y'all to catch this. Write these scriptures down. Study them in your devotion time. The Bible say, I marvel that you are so soon removed. Thank God for Sister Jones coming on. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that call you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. I need y'all to catch this. I need y'all to study this in your devotion time. Go back and study these words in your devotion time because the Bible says, study to show thyself approved under God. A work when I made a shame, but rightly divide the word of truth. So now if there's a right way to divide it, there must be also a wrong way to divide it. Am I talking right? Now, Galatians 1 and 6 out of the living Bible says, I am amazed that you're turning away so soon from God, who in his love and mercy invited you to share eternal life he gives through Christ. Christ, you, you are already following a different way to heaven, which really doesn't go to heaven at all. Now, let me, let, me, let me talk about this because a lot of people don't realize 
when you take text out of context, then it become error. That's why I like to take my time to explain what I'm talking about. So in your devotional time, go back and study it. Go back and look at it. Now, verse number seven say, which is not another. Let me read six and seven all together. Galatians one and six and seven. I marvel at the King James Bible. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. But there'll be some that pervert, that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of Christ. Now, the living Bible says in verse seven, for there is no other way than the one we showed you. You are being fooled by those who twist and change the truth concerning Christ. Now, here's the danger, because the Bible says he to add to the word, he had the plagues that are written in the book. But the Bible also say he that take it away from the word, he will take away the part out the book of life. And so when somebody teach and preach and explain the word of God to you, make sure they don't take text out of context like people do with Romans 10 and 9. Let me take my time and dissect this. Because they tell you, pray a sinner's prayer. According to Romans 10 and 9, they tell you, now you are saved. But Jesus said, except a man be born again of the water and the spirit, he'll no likewise enter into the kingdom. Then he said, he'll no likewise see the kingdom. Let me break this down and show you how to take text out of context. Because the first folk, the, the, the four gospels, all of them start somewhere around the birth of Christ. All of them end somewhere around the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. The book of Acts. That's the book of action. All the things that Jesus taught them in the four Gospels. When they got to the book of Acts, they put it in action. In the book of Acts is the birth of the church. Tell you how to be saved, how to get into the church. And then there were 21 letters written to the church. And Romans was one of the 21 letters written to the church, not written to sinners. Not telling you how to get saved, but the 21 letters was written to tell you how to live right. Then you have the book of Revelation, the book of, of prophecy, tell you what is, what it was, and what is to come. So there it is. If I want to know, if I want to know about the autobiography of Christ, I read the full gospel. But if I want to know about the birth of the church, how to get in the church, how to be born again, then I read the book of Acts. If I want to know how to live right, then I read the 21 epistle letters. And if I want to know uh, the prophetic word, I read the book of Revelation. So when people tell you, pray this prayer and now you're saved. I want to encourage you that is false doctrine. Are you listening to me? I say not only is false doctrine, you need to be leery of this. I call this easy religionism. Are you with me? And the reason why I call it easy religionism, now I don't have time to break all this down about works. Come on. Because the first thing people say, people say, Oh, we saved by grace, not a work lest any man should boast. What did, what did James say? James said, faith without work is dead. James says, show me your faith and I'll show you my faith by my work. But when people start taking stuff out of context, they do not understand. Because Jesus said in the book of John, I pray not for these alone, but I pray for all of them that believe on me through their word. So all of us, we need to believe on Jesus through the words of the apostle. Especially when it comes to Peter, because when Jesus asks the question, say, men and brothers, whom shall, uh, whom shall you say sent me, sent you? And Peter said that some say that you're Elias. Some say you're Jeremiah. Some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're just another prophet. But the Lord began to talk to Peter 
And Peter's mind being illuminated by the spirit of God, God asked Peter specifically, Peter, who you say sent you? Sent me. No, who, who you say I am? And Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And the Lord, <coughs> excuse me. And the Lord told Peter, Flesh and blood have not revealed this unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. I need y'all to catch this. He told Peter, Unto thee I give the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth should be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is going to be loose in heaven. Are you listening to me? Now, this is important. Because if Peter was given the keys, which is the word of God. That's why I say everybody should uh, understand how to flow with the discernment of spirit. You may not have that gift, but if you're led by the spirit of God, Excuse me, the spirit of God, God will be able to let you understand the difference between truth and error. False prophet, false apostle, false pastors, false teachers, or false evangelists. Now, we just got to read what Paul said that there's no other gospel. So now in the beginning, read and see how the church was born. Because the Bible said when the day of Pentecost fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a Russian, a modern Russian wind. And the Holy Ghost set on each of us, and they appeared unto us clothed in tongues like a fire. And when they received the Holy Ghost, they spake with tongues. And somebody said they must be drunk with new wine. But Peter stood up boldly and said, they're not drunk as you suppose, but this is that that was prophesied by the prophet Joel. I don't have time to go into all of that teaching, but let's skip down to verse number 36, chapter two of Acts. It says, therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God had made that same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter, and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? The Bible says, then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of, the, of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that's afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. It goes on to say, with many other words, did he testify and exhort, saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation. Other words, save yourself from this crooked and perverse generation. If somebody come preaching something contrary to what Peter said, contrary to what Paul said, I want you to realize you need to go check that out. See what the word of God said. Because Peter was a spokesperson for the apostles, but they didn't just ask Peter. The Bible say, they said unto Peter, to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren. Men represent gender, brethren represent humanity. Are you with me? So they weren't just talking to the 12. And the gospel writer was all there. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all of them was there. I believe that they were the one that penned the four gospels. I know I'm talking right. So if Peter would have misspoken, don't you think that the other 11 apostles would have spoke up? Come on, talk to me. If Peter would have misspoken, don't you think the four gospel writers would have spoken up? If Peter would have been mistaken, don't you think Mary, the mother of Jesus, would have spoke up? 120 people in the upper room and not one of them spoke against what Peter said because Peter had the keys to the kingdom. Come on, talk to me. Now, so now Peter tell them the first thing you have to do is repent. Most of these churches are not telling people to repent. 
have a change of mind, change your direction, change your lifestyle, turn from sin and turn to God. Because preaching about repentance is not popular. When you're preaching about uh, send a thousand dollars and God gonna bless you. Come on, that's popular. Understand what I'm saying. And like I first said, I believe in the law of reciprocity, but I also believe in preaching against sin. Because Paul says, shall we continue sin that grace may abide? And Paul said, God forbid that we that are set free from sin just live in a longer therein. Why aren't the preachers telling people to repent? And then the Bible said, and be baptized. Come on, talk to me. Now, why aren't the people telling everybody after they repent? They say, all you have to do is accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I beg to differ with you. Because the Bible says men received him. To them, he gave power to become the sons of God. I can have a million dollars sent to me. And it may be sent in my account. And I say, I accept it. But until I receive it, in person, I still accepted, but I hadn't received it. Come on. Now, somebody may cash out me some money. I may call them or text them and say, I received it. But if I don't ever put it in my bank account, and if I don't ever put it in my saving or checking account, I accept it, but I didn't receive it. Come on, talk to me. So now the Bible says, repent, be baptized. Who? Every one of you. He told me you. How? In the name of Jesus Christ. Why? For the remission of sin, the blot out remit uh, of you of your sins. Catch this. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Why? Because every baptized, born again believer, the Holy Ghost is promised to you. What did Jesus say? Believe on me as the scripture that said, and out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. This spake you of the spirit. So now if you repent, and if you've been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sins, the gift of the Holy Ghost is for you. Now, we was talking about Paul. And we was talking about Paul said there is no other gospel. So now, put everything in context, what did Paul preach? Did Paul preach anything contrary to what Peter preached? Let's check it out. Let's go to Acts chapter number 18. Let me see. Uh, let's start at verse number 24. Acts 18, verse number 24. Please write these scriptures down. Thank God for Brother Turner and Elder Ford coming out. Please write these scriptures down. Go back in your devotional time. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man. I need y'all to catch this now. The Bible say he was an eloquent man. He was skillful in the use of words. Catch this. Mighty in the scriptures. The only scriptures they had was from Genesis to Malachi. Come on, talk to me now. The Bible say he came to Ephesus. Now. Verse number 25, the Bible says, this man was instructed in the way of the Lord. I need y'all to catch it because a lot of people is instructed in the way of the Lord. But because of false teaching and false prophet and false preaching, they have been instructed in the fullness of the gospel. What you have may not be nothing wrong with what you have, but you might need to add to what you already got. Because this Bible said this man was modern in the scripture, came to Ephesus. The Bible said this man was instructed in the way of the Lord. Not the way of the world, not the way of the devil, not the way of the flesh. He was instructed in the way of the Lord being fervent in the spirit. This man wasn't some deadhead. When he preached, when he teach, when he taught, he did it with an emotional intense. The Bible says, spake and taught diligently things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. Now, the Bible says there was no greater man that proceeded out the womb of a woman 
than John the Baptist. John the Baptist, who is he? He was the forerunner of Christ. And the Bible said John came, and what did John do? John baptized them unto repentance and to the remission of sin. Go back in the book of Mark, check it out. I think it's chapter three. Come on. And so now, somebody say, well, John didn't baptize in Jesus' name. You know why John didn't baptize in Jesus' name? Because Jesus had not yet been crucified. Jesus had not yet been buried. Jesus had never rose from the dead. He had not yet been glorified. So John could not use the name to Jesus fulfill his earthly uh, duty, his earthly mission. Let me put it that way. Are you with me? Now catch this. The Bible says, with fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently to the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. When John saw Jesus coming, and Jesus came to John, and John began to tell Jesus, I need to be baptized of you. I'm not even worthy to stoop down or loose your shoes. What did Jesus tell him? Suffer to be so, to fulfill all righteousness. So who told you that baptism wasn't important? Who told you that baptism was only an outward show of inward conviction? Are you with me? And I can go along with that. I can go along with that. But if you have an inward conviction, then you ought to get baptized in Jesus' name. Now, when we look at uh, Matthew 28, 19, that was just a commission. The commission was fulfilled in the book of Acts chapter 2. Verse number 38. Come on. Because in Matthew 28, 19, they go there for teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father. Find out what the name of the Father is. I think it's John 5 and 43. Jesus said, I come in my Father's name. You receive me not. But if I come in another name, him shall you receive. Are you with me? The name of. Come on. The name of the Father. In that particular setting, father was used as a pronoun. So let's find out what the name of the father is. What I said, John 5 and 43. Jesus said, I come in my father's name. So let's go just a little bit further. End of the son. Matthew 1 and 21. The Bible says she shall bring forth the son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people, not in their sin, but from their sin. Come on, talk to me. And then it's saying the name of the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, when he was getting ready to go back to heaven, I won't leave you comfortless, but I'll send back another comforter. How he's coming? In my name. So there it is. The name of the Father, Jesus. The name of the Son, Jesus. The name of the Holy Ghost, Jesus. Because the Bible says in him with the fullness of the Godhead in a bodily form. The Bible say that, uh, I think the simple English Bible, I think it is, that the totality of divinity was in Jesus. Come on. So he that had the son had both the father and the son, but he that had not the son had neither the father or the son. All right. Acts chapter 18, verse number 26. I need to be able to finish this. And when he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, that was the meeting place where we were commonly called a church, whom Aquila and Priscilla had heard. That was a missionary team. They took him under them and they pounded under him the way of God more perfectly. People don't want to submit themselves. They go all the way back talking about what their ancestors was taught. Forget about what your ancestors were taught. I'm preaching gospel. Come on. I'm telling you right out the Bible. This man, the Bible said, instructed the way of the Lord, fervent in the spirit. He spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, but he didn't have everything he needed because he only knew the baptism of John. That baptism had expired. I can go a little bit further and talk about Moses when he brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. When they passed through the Red Sea and under the cloud, there it is, a type on the types and shadows, a type of water baptism because the water saved them from uh, the Egyptian. Are you listening to me? The cloud, a type of the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible say, as men are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. See, in the Old Testament, God was for man. 
In the New Testament, God was with me. But in the church today, God come to live inside of me. Are you listening to me? Now, what we're at, verse number 27. Verse number 27 said, and when he was deposed to pass into a chair, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive them, who, when he was come, helped them much, which had believed through grace. For he mightily, catch this, he mightily convinced the Jews and that publicly is shown by the scripture that Jesus was Christ. Come on. He knew who Jesus was. He knew about the Old Testament. He knew about John the Baptist, baptism. He knew all of that. But the Bible says his missionary uh, team of husband and wife, uh, uh, Aquila and Priscilla, they took him unto him. They explained to him the way of God more perfectly. That's what I'm trying to do right now. That's why I told you it's time to get wild. Let's go to verse number, uh, chapter 19, verse uh, number one. You do know the Bible was originally, was not divided into chapters and verses like this. The Bible just continued on without dividing in the chapters and verses. So you could have taken chapter 18 and just continued because it's just a, chapter 19, just a continuation of verse uh, chapter 18. Catch this. And it came to pass that while Apollo was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, catch this, and found his certain disciple. What disciple did they find? Because if he would have been the disciple of Jesus Christ, he would have known about uh, repenting, being baptized in water in Jesus' name. He would have known about being filled with the Holy Ghost, whatever this is speaking in other tongues. So he was the disciple of John the Baptist. John, the forerunner of Christ, had 12 disciples, just like Jesus did. Catch this, verse number two, Acts chapter 19. He said unto them, have you received the gift, uh, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Why is that important? Because the Bible said, believe on me as the scriptures that said. People are telling people all they need to do is believe. That's a lie. The Bible said, believe on me as the scriptures that said, and out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters, this spake of the spirit. So after you believe, you need to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Come on, talk to me. I'm fired up here. Now, the Bible say, and they said unto him, have, we have not so much as heard whether there be in the Holy Ghost. And I remember all of the denominational churches used to say, say the same thing. They used to be afraid of the apostolic, Pentecostal, tongue talking, hand clapping, believing in a holy, sanctified life. They didn't want nothing to do with us. Now everybody trying to imitate what we do. We the real thing. We preach the real truth. We preach nothing but the gospel. And that's the reason why I read so many scriptures so you won't say I'm taking it out of context. Now let's go to verse number three. He said unto them, 19 and three, the book of Acts, Unto then, why were you baptized? And they said, unto John's baptism. Why is baptism important? Because look in the book of Matthew, Jesus talked about it. The book of Mark, Jesus talked about it. The book of John, Jesus talked about it. The book of Luke, the Bible said, repent and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. This could not even be taught until they get back to Jerusalem. Look in the Bible. Acts 1 and 12, the Bible say, they, when they returned back to Jerusalem, then Peter could preach and teach the mandate of the church. Now, catch this, catch this. I got to finish, I got to finish. Now, look at what it said, verse number four. Then said Peter, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him, which shall come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. Catch this, catch this, verse number five. I'm almost through with it. Don't you leave me now. Acts 19 and five. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me they got baptized over again? One version of the Bible said they got re-baptized. Did not tell you that John's 
uh, John's baptism had expired. But on the day of Pentecost, Peter introduced us unto the plan of salvation. Here Peter is speaking and saying the same thing that what Paul said. My question to you, is your bishop, your pastor, your apostle, your prophet, your teacher, your evangelist, is their name in the book? These are people that was ordained by God himself. Are you with me? Now, the Bible says 1905, the book of Acts. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them and spake with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about 12. I told you, John had 12 disciples, just like Jesus. And all of John's disciples got rebaptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of their sin. My time is up. My time is up. I got to pray a short prayer. I have to pray a short prayer today because my time is up. It's time for me to get off of here. Uh, as a matter of fact, I went a few minutes over my time, but I thank God for all of y'all that stayed here with me. I didn't even get on here today to talk about that, but because I know that people need to know the truth. Gracious Father, we thank you for the word that you're giving us, God. And because we spent our time trying to expound, explain the word of God, I pray that you open the hearts of the minds of the people that's on your God, that they receive this engrafted word. And God, I pray for everyone on the prayer request list. I pray, God, let there be a lifting and healing and deliverance in the name of Jesus. And God, I thank you right now. And I pray for all of those that support us, God, both spiritual and financial breakthroughs. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank God. I hope, I hope and pray. I hope and pray that this word has touched somebody's heart. I hope and pray that somebody received this word. And the worst thing for you to do, I need you to hear me. The worst thing for you to do and go back and ask your past to explain that to you. Because one of two things, one of two things, if he can explain it to you correctly, I need y'all to hear me now. If he can explain it to you correctly and did not do it correctly, then he's a hypocrite. A lot of people try to compromise. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son. And in the of the Holy Ghost in the sweet name of Jesus. No, mm -mm. that is unbiblical and that is incorrect. You don't see none, Peter, Paul, Philip, none of them baptized like that. So where did you get it from? Because you're trying to hold on to your tradition and then add a little truth at the end. I know y'all not gonna like me. And now it's so bad in the church now, all they tell you is just, Shake the preacher's hand, you're a member of the church. You may be a member of a local assembly, but you're not a member of the church in heaven unless you're born again the way the Bible says. Are you with me? All right, saints of God, y'all know I love you, and that's the reason why I tell you the truth. That's why I spend my time. What? That's the reason why I tell you that we're victorious, saints. Nothing can come to us. Because we are victorious. I didn't say I'm going to be victorious. Listen to me. Nothing can.